Hello and welcome to another CAN Diagnostic episode. In today's riveting video we have an ECU of a Honda FRV 2.2 litre CDTI. The story behind this particular ECU is it has no CAN. Um, what's happened is they suspected the ECU was faulty, they couldn't communicate with it. Um, so they've t this particular company has taken the ECU off and tried to power this up on the bench. Okay. Um, obviously, this is a 12 volt ECU, and they've tried to power it up with a boost pack. However, they have used 20 a 24 volt power pack. Okay. Now this power pack will charge at around between 28 and 30 volts. Um, but not only have they tried to power this up with just over 28 volts they've also tried pairing up through the can lines which is not clever uh, usually if they'd have used 12 volts on this ECU um, they probably would have been alright can bus is extremely resilient and um, it can get shorter to power uh, you know to battery positive it can get shorter to battery earth um, it doesn't matter as soon as you take that uh, power or earth away from it the can will just recover, it's just what it does. It's extremely resilient, it's extremely good at what it does. Um, however, if you put more than double its rated voltage down the can line, that's where bad things happen, especially on an issue that's only rated for 14 volts anyway, maximum probably about 16 volts. Um, so, it's completely open line. The I'll show you, I'll take it off, um, turn the meter on. Let me lift you up from here quickly. This open line, basically, that's what that's saying. So we need to look at this and find out why. But in other news with this uh, car, they called me in and I had a look myself after they'd already blown this up and I found a broken power wire, maybe two inches away from the ECU. So it wasn't even the ECU that's at fault. This is a complete induced fault via um, idiotacy is probably the best word to put it idiotic behaviour don't get powering ECUs up with power packs on the bench especially if you've never done it before and especially if you don't know what you're bleeding doing and even then you do not power canvas right so we're going to take this cover off I'm probably not going to Keep you with me while I take it off because it can be um, time consuming. Take the four bolts out, have to heat up, heat up the silicon probably, and then prise them apart. So I'll probably just um, get you back with me when the cover's off. See you in a minute. So we have finally got the board off thanks to these um, little gems that uh, Igor at Cars Exposed sent me. Very grateful of that, my friend. Thank you, brother. So, I'm just going to back back pro oh, sorry, pin out one of these can lines. And I'm basically just going to trace that. So, um, multimeter, continuity mode. On me, I'll get set up. Okay, so multimeter, diode mode, uh, continuity mode. When we hear the beep, so now I thought this would be fairly difficult to trace back. In all honesty, hence why I'm recording it. However, literally millimeters away from the can line, we can follow it. The two resistors here, and these two resistors are burnt to shit. Can you see the discoloration of these two? So, this is I can. Don't know if it's high or low, it makes no odds to me right this precise moment. Um, goes off to these two, uh, to this one, 
Now this one here will be the other um, high or low. If we test the other side of it, nada. Bollocks. Problem is we don't exactly know the resistance rating of these two resistors. So, hmm. And I'm going to see if I've got another board and see if I can take these two components off another board and put on this and then see if we get our um, 120 ohm resist resistance back. So I'm going to go and through one's parts department. Right, so it turns out I've actually got two of these ECUs in stock. Um, so for the purpose of the video I'm going to continue to repair this ECU anyway. However, I may, at the end of it all, just offer him a replacement ECU. Um, clone his original to, um, well not this particular one because I'm going to take this apart now, but to uh, another ECU that I have. So, let's just test the resistance of this device. you see what I'm doing? Not really. As you can see, these are a lot better colour. And that is 60 ohms, or 61. So that's precisely what we expect to see from um, Canvas 60 on each one 120. So I am going to swap these over and see if we get our um, resistance back. Take the old ones off first. Being a resistor, they're not, um, their polarity doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter which way we take them on or put them off. And you can't really even see what I'm doing, can you? I'm going to take these off here. And just a quick one don't put your hand in front of the hot air gun like I just did. It's pretty warm. straight away okay gonna lift the new ones off now see we can't lose these One, two. So I've just realised that my camera skills are absolutely piss poor. Okay, so turn the iron on. I'm just going to clean up these pads a little bit. Put some fresh solder down. Hopefully this one, it really is this easy, a couple of resistors and it's done. But like I say, either way, I'm going to claim the CCU after and offer them the repaired one or the new one. And completely down to the, uh, the garage. I 
I'll move it for my comfort. It needs to be there for your eyes, not mine. Okay, so we're picking the air back up again. So yeah, moral of the story is do not put 28 plus volts down a cam system. Doesn't matter what it's on. Don't do it. Bad news. So once I put the first one, I'm just taking the heat off the board, just so that one goes a little bit solid, cools down enough, so it's not going to fly off when I put the um, the second one down. Turn that off a bit. Let's put a bit of um, cleaning solution. Can you still see that? Hello. Much better. Just keep forgetting I'm actually doing a video and I should be talking, explaining instead of just getting on with it and plodding along and muttering to myself. There we go, it really was just that simple. Here we are, let's pull it straight off the stand. You see that all right? 123.24 ohms. Um, so it's fixed. I was hoping it's going to be a lot more complex than that, to be honest, so it would make a better video. But all it was were these two tiny resistors here, terminators. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I'm going to clone the boards. Um, nonetheless, this, will, this is going to get cloned. Um, just in case the customer wants a new board, new PCB. If I was them, I would personally. Um, and I'd make sure that garage paid for it because what they did was pretty idiotic. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to show you the final product of this working in the vehicle for obvious reasons. Um, just a quick note on canvas that 123 ohms. Now, I'm sure some of you are expecting to see, um, see the resistance will go down slightly now, the heat's decreasing. Um, 100. A lot of you expect to see 120 ohms. In the book, that's exactly what it would say. However, in reality, you're always going to get plus or minus of about five ohms um, throughout the system. When again, when that's when that's halved, you're looking at 61 ohms, uh, 62, something like that, which is a couple of ohms. It is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, so that is more than acceptable to me. So. Hip hip hurrah. So until next time, ta da.